Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome where Brown controlled the first quarter and leads Chris Saran and the Orangemen 4-1. Saran has not had a, a really bad day. He's, uh, they've allowed people to get real close to him a couple of times, and Brown taking good shots. They've only taken eight, and they've gotten four goals, so they're being very efficient in that department. But Syracuse has an opportunity now to be man up for 27 seconds. And, uh, you know, if you've got a man up, you really, confidence-wise, you've got to think, we got to get one in here. Look for the sneak from behind. Ball down. Archer made the pass. Bettinger and Archer was the was, intended man. Archer was in the crease, and that's going to cost him possession. There's still a man up. But uh, now you're going to look at the first quarter's stats there. Shots, 11-3. And uh, the clear is 12-8. We said that uh, Brown able to, after the ball was down, clear it, get right back up and take some shots at Syracuse. That should uh, release Brown. They got the ball in the offensive portion of the field. Gutile giving it back as Brown sets things up, leading 4 1. Towers, who has played very well so far, being watched by Finn. Quite a height mismatch right. there. Nice save. He Towers got off a good left-handed shot. Saran was there. Lockwood for Syracuse, racing upfield. To Archer. Good look for Ryder, and it's a goal for Syracuse. Matt Ryder from Jamie Archer to make it 4-2. An especially good goal because watch what happens. I thought Stalford had it, at least had it tracked. Watch him move. Ball passed right in front of him. He slides over. He knows where he's going to get the... Get the uh, pipe. Oh, it got just inside on the handle side. So it was the offside and he snuck it by. <laughs> and you know, the way he had his body there, you're supposed to put your body right up against the pipe. Maybe six inches, Dan, and he got it past there. Nice shot. Twelfth goal of the year for Ryder. He leads Syracuse in goals. Another assist for Jamie Archer. He has two today. He's assisted on both Syracuse goals and he leads the team with 17 assists and 24 points this season. <laughs> that looks like a push. No possession push, which basically means in lacrosse, if you don't have the ball in your possession and you, there's a <clears throat> technical foul, there's no time served. You just lose the ball, and mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened there. Syracuse gets it back. Those little things can kill you, too, as Syracuse maybe a little momentum change, as they hope. As they've battled back to 4-2. Pusha with it for Syracuse. Draws a defender, gives to Barr. Barr's shot goes wide. John Barr back in the lineup after being out for two games after a bit of a discipline problem with head coach Roy Simmons, but he was back at practice this week and is seeing time today. Archer to Pusha. About two minutes into the second quarter, Syracuse down 4-2. Paul Sullivan. Draws two defenders. <laughs> if it was a shot, Syracuse yeah. will get it, and yeah. it is. You now, there was an old rule, could you just throw the ball and yell shot? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's up to the official to determine whether it's a shot or not, because as we said, whoever's closest to it on a shot, when it, but the shots aren't always that clear to, uh, to the viewer or to the people here watching the game, but it was a shot, and the official let the other official know, so Pusha brings it in for Syracuse. Archer behind where he's so effective to Ryder. Syracuse's co-captain. Now you've seen that zone, de zone defense, it appears, for Brown. And we said they would probably throw a little bit of different stuff. Syracuse had, had some problems with some zones, especially against Loyola, and uh, other teams scouting them say, we're going to give them a little mixture, and we see a little zone here. And you see him shifting and guarding an area and not a man keeping their sticks up. Oh, it looked like they had a nice opportunity there, Syracuse. Barr couldn't get off a good shot. Races on for the ground ball. And, Sy well, Syracuse had it. Now it's loose again. You've got to get in front there and draw either a push or hope that it's off of Brown, and it was. So, Syracuse 
hustling all the time. That was what, Sullivan, yeah, 21, just checking to make sure. He is a hustler. Took over for Barr, and now Syracuse is going to make a change as uh, Pusha comes out, and you'll see coming in on the right side of the screen. A Dom Finn running in for Finn, Syracuse. Yep. Barr coming off now. Colsey will come in. Sullivan leaves for Syracuse. Fietta comes in. That's away from the ball. This is Bettinger with the ball. He oh, takes the low shot. Good Stalford save. is there. Good save. Syracuse has to play defense now all over the field to get the ball back. Oh, they want a call here. They got 10 seconds. Oh, now it's on the ground. Flag down against Syracuse. Brown. Timeout called by Brown. Yeah. They got a technical foul. And I don't know whether it was before the timeout or not. Yeah, that's going to be an offsides. So the uh, Syracuse will now be a man down, but uh, Brown gets the timeout. Offside, you got to have those four guys there. And even if you're running up and you just, that foot touches the line, Dan, they'll, they'll call it. And uh, one of the toughest calls in lacrosse because there's so much going on, you have to count all the bodies and watch. Somebody from Syracuse, now there's one, two, three, four guys. Well, now there's now there's three, but watch, see his foot right, right there on the left. Hold it, that's a great shot, guys. The goalie's back, there's three guys there. The other guy went over and he's over that much and that was the flag. <laughs> and you could see him straining yeah, to keep yeah. the feet in. It was like a gymnast trying to land the dismount. Right. Trying to keep the feet balanced. Yeah, now that, that's, I've seen him a lot closer than that. That was a good call. So Syracuse, uh, another man up opportunity, a second now for Brown. They are zero for one at this point. Eleven fifteen left in the first half. Brown trying to add to a four to two lead. Syracuse, like uh, most teams, using zone principles down a man. Now there's exactly what you try to do. Oh, rip the net. And a goal for David Evans, who strikes again. That's his third goal. The freshman also has an assist. Evans looking very sharp. Watch, he's going to take a right hand high shot. It looked like they had it knocked down, but Evans, look at that. Ooh, he blistered him on stick side. And Evans gets his third goal. Chad Smith, the defensive midi, was in. Looked like he knocked the ball, changed its flight, which is what you're supposed to do. Knocked down the passing lanes, but boy, Evans got it, and he knew what to do with it. 5-2. Fazy. No, procedure. So it'll stay white ball. They stopped the fast break there. Dom Finn for Syracuse. Finn's made some nice moves, but has not scored so far today. Takes the shot, and Finn scores. That one paid off. Dom Finn on the board for the first time today, and Syracuse is back within two. He was a little frustrated earlier, I think. He you know, pounded a stick in frustration. Now, this is what you were talking about. Now, they slide two guys over. Watch, he's going to take a left-handed shot, and he takes the left-handed goalie on the offside. And watch him come back. Watch him come back left hand. Nice shot as he was dealing on Nelson, 15, and then 42 slid over to try to help out Smith. But uh, Dom Finn beat them both and the goalie for goal number three. Finn, the first team All-America last year, even though he was on Syracuse's second midfield line. <laughs> That's a nice compliment. <laughs> Ryder for Syracuse, moving in, beating Smith, takes the shot and scores. Great goal for Matt Ryder, and Syracuse is within one at five to four. You mentioned that they had not been making a lot of passes, and we thought maybe they'd have to, but this is just a one-on-one -on -one move. He beats Smith 42 cleanly, and uh, that's just uh, death for the goalie. You can't do anything like that when you're uh, 
got 36 square feet and a guy who can put the ball anywhere he wants. You mentioned that Brown's defensive players are really being aggressive and trying to knock the ball out of Syracuse's stick. Sometimes the uh, disadvantage of that is that if you make a harsh move like that, you leave yourself wide open to getting burned. Especially 20 yards away from the goal, which is exactly what happened, and then got no help, got no backup, and Fazy doing a job on faceoffs has gotten the last couple and given Syracuse scoring opportunities. Here comes Charlie Lockwood for Syracuse. Back to Ryder, who just scored. Syracuse trying to tie it at five. We're in the second quarter. Well, they're going all over this. Smith, and he's going to get a hold on him. And they, they appear to be taking it right to number 42. And he's going to take a seat, I think, if that's who they called it on. Yeah, he wanted a, he wanted a award, but he's going to get 30 seconds down as Syracuse burned him once before. And now he gets a hold called on him. 34-year-old Peter Lasagna, the first-year Brown coach. Now this, his team, trying for this uh, defensive stop with Syracuse up a man. It's interesting. Both, this is kind of a little turning point for both teams. Syracuse gets a chance to tie it up and really pick up some momentum. And, of course, Brown wants to turn him back and say, we stopped him, we still got the lead. Lockwood. Shot gets through, but That's why they call him the laser. Mark. You can't even <laughs> see it. I, I was wondering where it was going to end up. You notice they try to, they're given a lot of zone. It's sunk back in pretty tightly, actually, for Brown. This is Archer. Bettinger back to Archer. They're now being Ryder. Very patient. Lockwood, low shot. Looked like it was stopped before it ever got to the goaltender. It goes right back to Lockwood. Even up. All even. Syracuse down 5-4. Ryder, he's scored twice so far for Syracuse. Takes the shot, scores! It's a hat trick in the first half for Ryder, and Syracuse has scored three straight to tie it at five. Looked like they wanted to spread Brown out when they get in the man-to-man, -man, spread them out. Look how much they've got, look how much room you've got to maneuver there, see? Now look, the jump is too late and they take him stick side. When you've got that much room to maneuver, Nobody can slide over. They slide, but it's much too late. And Ryder ties it at five. And Brown uses its second time out. See that Matt Ryder already has the first half hat trick. And his team high goal total is up to 14 this season. Syracuse's last three goals have come without an assist. First the one-on-one -on -one move by Finn, and then the last two by Matt Ryder. That's shoot nine shots this quarter and four goals. That's, uh, that's what Brown was doing in the first quarter. That's that 50%. You can do that. You, uh, it's just a, a question of who can get the most shots off. But uh, Syracuse uh, looks like they're also a little more confident. You know, they, they're playing a little more sharply, a little more focused, I think. And again, a reminder that Syracuse's next game is coming up on Tuesday night here at the Dome. Syracuse taking on the Hobart Statesmen, trying to beat Hobart for the eighth consecutive year. Even though Syracuse keeps winning, they always seem to be great games against Hobart. Well, it used to be at any given year, uh, you didn't know who would win that game. But uh, a little bit of the, the talent, uh, Division One, Division Three, is starting to kind of separate itself uh, Division three not able to get as many people as they used to. Hobart obviously one of the best in Division three, along with Nazareth. A lot of Central New York schools, but still always a good game to watch. Syracuse will get a great chance to scout Hobart later tonight as Hobart will play Ohio Wesleyan here at the Dome following the Syracuse game. 5-5 five, five the score, approaching oh. the halfway point of the second quarter. They had a nice unsettled situation. Brown, did they... Still do. Well, they fed the crease. Syracuse up with it. Paul Sullivan, and he gets it back to Saran. Saran way upfield. Whoa. Smith had it. He had it checked away, but Brown has the ball. And it's Gainsbauer coming upfield for the Bears. Oliver Marty firing it back. And it's Martinelli, Chris Martinelli from Longmeadow, Massachusetts. Still got uh, 
Beardsley on Evans. Marty guarded by Kugavan. And Kugavan takes the ball away, puts it on the carpet. Fazy with a good poke, but Brown is able to come up with it again. That's a tough, unsettled situation. You try to converge on the ball, and then if the Brown jersey comes up with it, you got to find your man quickly right there. That's an interception. Nice one by Kugavan. Absolutely. As it was intended for Marty, and Kugavan came up with it. And now we're going to see the goalie take it across as Saran will go, draw a couple of people, and he gets the ball to the laser. And Lockwood scores. That'll be an assist for Chris Saran, a rare assist for the goaltender as Syracuse pulls ahead 6-5. And look at Chris Saran. I think he gave them what they needed. They needed a little bit of adrenaline. They needed something to get excited about. And here's what Saran does. He goes right across. Now, he's got to draw somebody, and they start to draw, and that makes the field open up a lot more. And then Laser, watch him. He's going to get hit. He gets hit as that ball is released. They even got a piece of his stick, and he puts goal number six in for Syracuse, and the laser really took a great shot there. Seventh goal of the year for Charlie Lockwood. Syracuse has scored the last four to turn a three-goal de deficit into a one-goal lead. Brown wins the faceoff, and will look to tie it. Momentum has definitely shifted at this point. But the great thing about the faceoff, Dan, is that you can get the momentum right back because you can get the ball and have another offensive opportunity. You can control it all day if you can get those faceoffs. What if Saran is out of breath at all after that sprint? You know, he, he, the guy's got about like 0.5% body fat. He's very <laughs> muscular, and I, I doubt it. Low shot, Saran with a beautiful save. And he oh. fires up quickly to Barr. Nice outlet. Syracuse. With a fast break chance, shot taken by Archer, stopped by Stalfert, and he picks it off the turf. Syracuse gonna get a fast break against them. They drop back in the hole, look for people to pick up. Syracuse has the numbers back. It's a matter of matching up, which Syracuse has been able to do. Now the shot taken. Nice save. Brown is calling for a goal, but no goal indicated. Doesn't count unless the official does it. Saran apparently picked it up before it crossed the strike. Beardsley, he'll take it. Yes. Beardsley scores his first goal of the season. <laughs> and he loves it. Syracuse is on top 7-5. to five. <laughs> Saran doesn't look like he's out of breath. And watch, when you get 72 inches of stick, watch him whip the stick. Watch the net. Watch what happens when the net... Boof! You get a 200 pound guy with a 72 inch stick and he whips that. Watch him, he's gonna turn right around the circle and then whip it. Nice look at it from just about ground level. Great job guys, down in the truck. Beautiful look. And a continuing struggle, Fazy coming up with another. Fazy having a terrific day in the face-offs for Syracuse against Tom Peters, who, as you mentioned, came into this game winning nearly 90% of his face-offs. Archer, spin, shoots. A bit wide, right or closest for Syracuse. Now, you've got to imagine you're a Brown defenseman and, and you're the Brown goalie. And now you were really able to put it to them, and now you're feeling this onslaught. they got to do a lot of talking. they got to stay calm, and they're out of that zone. They're back into a man-to-man, -man, and they got to help each other and try to jump and cause that ball to go on the carpet. Fietta for Syracuse, around to Finn. Oh. Look at his quickness. Bouncer is uh, picked up by Stalford. Yeah, they got, they got on him. He couldn't really take the hard shot that he wanted, but. Andy Furman running up, Colsey. Tried to knock it away. Furman held on and was able to pass successfully to Evans. Evans has played very well so far for Brown. Back to Towers. Towers being marked by Thorpe. Good job by Thorpe to move Towers away from the goal. That's, that's a big, strong guy, and he pushed him right out and then kept the stick on him. Five minutes left in the half. Syracuse with a two-goal lead after trailing by three at the end of the first quarter. Martinelli being watched by Fietta. They cross over. 
Behind him, Marty, who's been very quiet so far, gets by Kugavan, pass in front, shot a little bit wide, back to Towers, and he couldn't grab it in his cross. Finn for Syracuse. Up to Colsey, who makes a beautiful catch. Roy Colsey running up. Moves to his left, takes the shot, saved by Stalford. And a fast break the other way. It's tiring to watch these teams. Well, Brown's fast break has slowed down just a tad there. I think they're getting a little bit tired as they've had to play defense the last couple of runs and then try to come back in and fast break on the offense. Syracuse puts that kind of pressure on you as we're down to about four minutes left in this first half. Gutile being watched by Colsey. Colsey swinging at him. Back to Martinelli. Fietta on him. Syracuse not able to have their big stick midfielder in the game at this point. Oh. Gutile was looking for Evans. Never sure. I think he should have taken, excuse me, Dan, just I think he should have taken the shot. Evans was really pretty well guarded, and Saran would have really come out and clobbered him and he had an open alley he tried to make the pass one of the most impressive things so far for Syracuse in my opinion has been Kugavan on Marty yeah he's done a great job who Marty came in as the guy with a lot of attention he's really done very little so far and Towers has uh, as advertised mm -hmm. oh here's a fast break Towers taking it away for Brown it's a two-on-one opportunity Towers shoots stopped by Saran Marty was open, and Towers took the shot. This is a wild game, I'll tell you that. Brown will have another opportunity. Yeah, they got their big stick on Syracuse, still not able to get their big stick midfield in. You can see it's been a long drought for Brown, about eight minutes since the last Brown goal. Syracuse playing great defense, and that was a great save. Nice jump, backhand shot by Towers. Gorgeous spinning shot by Towers as he first got it by Beardsley and then by Saran. Towers talking to Beardsley. Nice shot. Watch what he does. Because Beardsley's right on him. And he takes it behind the back. And Saran not able to stop it. So Brown right back in it. 7-6, 247 left. There's Second look. goal for Andy yeah. Towers. Nice. Nice goal by Towers. Face off Syracuse 9 to 4 as they start to assert themselves. At least Fazy has, he gets it out, ball down, possession none yet. Sullivan dropping his head to push away the Brown player, but Brown comes up with it. Sullivan running after, and he's able to check it away. Great play by Sullivan. Now it's Lockwood. The fans coming to their feet. Lockwood scores. Charlie Lockwood gets credit for his second goal, but the play was really made by Paul Sullivan. Watch Sullivan. Bang, right there. The ball is down. Starts going the other way. That was Martinelli. He stole it from. Look at the pass, the quick pass. And then you're going to see this is why they call him the laser. Right there. It got there so quickly, he got a stick on it, couldn't stop it. Watch Martinelli lose it right there. It's just a great job. And they started back up the field, so they're getting a lot of mileage out of Sullivan. Syracuse on top, 8-6. 2.15 left in the first half. It's been a very entertaining half here at the Dome. Sullivan out of Scarsdale, New York. A sophomore just made one of the plays of the game. 8-6, to six, as you said, Dan, very entertaining. First half belonged to Brown. It was 4-1 after one. The second, uh, the first quarter, rather, belonged to Brown. The second quarter has been mostly Syracuse. And that has been the case throughout the season. Syracuse has been a second quarter team. Towers completed the pass. It's Gutile. Towers runs down the loose ball. Gets it to Gutile. He couldn't control. But he hustles after it. Thorpe with a good use of the stick for Syracuse. 
And again, it's John Barr. Nice look to Archer. Archer scores, a flag goes down. Goal will count for Syracuse. Yeah. Archer gets credit for the goal off the feed from John Barr. And it's 9-6. I think Smith, 42, is going to be called for a push. It may wipe, be wiped out by the goal. There's the ball, stopped momentarily, but watch the rebound. Nice shot. As Archer caught, watch the ball, knocked right into his cross. And he just turned and fired, and uh, the penalty wiped out by the goal. The non-personal nature, technical foul was wiped out by a goal. Nice work by uh, Archer there as well to stay out of the crease. He kind of tiptoed right along the yellow line. Syracuse with its first three goal lead. Now it's Dom Finn. It's an 8-2 run for Syracuse here in the second quarter. Make it 9-2 in the quarter. Casey Donegan with a goal. We talked about the the goals coming off the passes, they've had so many unassisted. That was a beautiful, beautiful one right there. As they get the ball down on the crease, and Ryder comes around. And watch Donegan. They slide over, and when you slide, you leave somebody uncovered. And Donegan, number one, punched it for goal number 10. See that? Nice look. Casey Donegan, who had one last week, is up to three goals this season. The junior from Corning. Nice job. Faceoffs becoming important. Syracuse ahead 10 to 6 at this point, but the crucial ones, they've been coming up with a lot this second quarter. Jeff Schusler gets an opportunity to show his medal as a faceoff man. Brown is able to come up with it. Ryder getting the assist on that last goal. It's his first assist of the day to go with three goals for Syracuse. Yeah, they didn't advance that ball. That's going to cost you. you got 10 seconds to move it into your offensive area. Down again. Fired it wide. Brown gets the ball. They so got no call. 28 seconds left in the half. Syracuse leading 10-6. Thanks to a terrific second quarter. Syracuse has now outscored opponents 28-9 in the second quarter this year. The Loyola game and this game have been the two where it really has stood out. Syracuse dominating second quarters after falling behind in the first. 16 seconds left in the quarter. Brown should get at least one good opportunity. Down to 10 seconds. Marty behind the goal. Kugavin watching him. Marty with four seconds. It's going to be up to Marty. Two seconds. One second. That's the half. A great job by Kugavan preventing Marty from getting off a shot before the half came to an end. Real nice jump. They applied the body, put Marty on the turf, and it stays. 10-6. So the first half was like two games. Brown controlling the first quarter to lead it 4-1, but Syracuse dominating the second, 9-2 in the quarter, and at the half, it's Syracuse 10, Brown 6. Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome after a very entertaining first half. Syracuse with a four-goal lead, despite trailing at the end of the first quarter, 4-1. But a big second quarter, Syracuse outscoring Brown 9-2, has given Syracuse the four-goal advantage at the half. We'll have first-half highlights coming up in a moment on Super Sports. Good first half of the Dome. Syracuse, as you see, leads fifth-ranked Brown. 10-6, Stan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome. Good crowd looking on, and they have seen a very entertaining half so far. Nobody's going to ask for their money back. This is a great <laughs> game. 
We're going to take a look at some of the first half highlights, and we'll start with Brown taking the early lead. It was 4-1 Brown at the end of the first quarter, and a key was the freshman, David Evans. Evans really looked good. He made an, a number of nice moves right there, just one-on-one, -on -one, and Syracuse did not look really uh, organized defensively. They looked a little bit befuddled. But Syracuse would come back with a big second quarter, and here is one of the key goals in a 9-2 Syracuse run. Sullivan did a great job, knocked the ball away, started a run going the other way, and Lockwood, the laser, just unassisted, just going to take a nice hard shot, and uh, that really epitomizes the second half as opposed to the first half. They're really playing much, much better, Syracuse is, in this uh, second quarter, I should say. Take Let's a look, look at, at some of the first half stats. Yeah, look at 38 shots to 16, but Syracuse not as efficient. They did not take a lot of hard shots early, did not pick a lot of good shots. They have since improved. Ground ball's pretty even. Clears early. Brown was in the lead, but Syracuse has come back and cleared the ball very, very well. Saves 15 to 7. Uh, Saran's come up with some good ones. They had some uh, opportunities to shoot him almost unmolested early, but they have come back and played much better defense the second quarter. We'll see if the second half's as good as the first. It's been a great one so far, and Syracuse leads it at the break, 10-6. Syracuse trying to move over 500 for the first time this season, leading 10-6 at the half and trying to improve its record to 3-2 in 93. And uh, they want to maintain this momentum that they established in the second quarter, I'm sure, as they... Have a number of fans who are looking on and really got excited there. Brown has played very, very well. Pete Lasagna and his uh, crew from Providence. Lasagna was an assistant at Brown for the last 10 years before taking over this year. He is also a Brown grad, getting his degree back in 1982. Yeah, they lost a lot of people. They did not think Brown, most people did not think Brown would be that successful, but they have done a great job uh, up to this point in their down by four, but have played exceptionally well so far today. Face-offs uh, still being contested like they have been all day, and uh, Brown, the big stick on the right wing, comes up with that, takes a bounce shot. Not much on that shot taken by Andy Furman, and here comes Syracuse, again running upfield. Dom Finn cradling the ball. Marty defends against him. Colsey. Looking for his first goal. Colsey with a shot. Stopped by Stalford. And the loose one on the ground picked up by Harvey Smith. Stalford with 15 saves. So he is on quite a pace, even though he's also allowed 10 goals. Nice little flip pass by Thorpe to get it up to Colsey. Now it's Matt Ryder for Syracuse. Ryder with a spin move, takes the shot. I don't know if that was knocked away by the goaltender or just wide of the mark. Good. But in any case, uh, it did go wide. Good hustle by Stalford, but uh, Syracuse will get the ball back on the shot. It'll be Bettinger to walk it in for Syracuse. About one minute into the second half with the Orangemen up by four. Brown's got to make sure this game does not get out of hand at this point. They don't want to give them anything easy. See Stall for that left-handed goalie. Finn will take the shot off the foot or ankle of Stallford. Make it 16 saves. Nice step by Stallford. Bring those feet together, and he got just one in time to ricochet the ball out of there. Finn makes a move. Colsey was the player charging toward the net, taking the pass from Archer, trying to, but he couldn't get off a good shot. Now it's Bettinger. <laughs> he had an open net. With Stalford way out in front, but couldn't get it cleanly toward the goal. Smith with a shovel up, shovel up field. It'll be Beardsley for Syracuse. He gets it up to Colsey. Sullivan. To Dom Finn. Finn. Passing. Archer, I beg your pardon, Sullivan couldn't get off the shot. Picked up by Greg Rosicki. Martinelli running up for Brown. 
Big stick Mitty and Smith just made his appearance, so he will be in to play defense. Beardsley whacking at Evans. Evans with three goals for Brown. Towers out in now for Brown, number 44, up on the right hand side of the screen. He's the big guy. His height will make him stand out for Brown. Gutile swings it back in front. Now it'll be Gutile getting it back. Just about parallel with the front of the goal. Now it's Towers. Not a lot of aggressiveness being shown at this point by the Brown offensive attack. Syracuse obviously deserves a lot of the credit for that. Taking their time. Marty trying to do something against Kugavan, who's really shut him down. Back to Towers. Pass in front. Shot off the mark by Evans. Towers is there, though, for Brown to hold on to the ball. Big stick midi, 43 for Syracuse. Chad Smith jumped there. They got the ball to Towers. He redirected it. They couldn't get a goal, but it, you know, hard to leave Towers unprotected, but he made a nice move. Smith did. Martinelli winds up. Shot goes high. Jeff Iserson, the closest man for Brown. About four minutes into the third quarter, no scoring in the second half. Martinelli behind to Iserson. Smith on him. And back around, Gutile against Doyle of Syracuse. Looking in, cradling with the left hand. Now the pass. Checked away. Iserson had it momentarily, and the whistle blows. Oh, they're going to get Smith, the big stick midfielder, and so he got him on the head. So Syracuse will be down a man for one minute, and this will be goal up, man up opportunity number three for Brown. They're one of two at this point. So they will be down for 30 seconds. Hans Schmidt, 44, comes in to play defense with a knee brace on and a big stick. Mm -hmm. So you've got Kugavan in. Thorpe, Beardsley, and of course, Hans Schmidt with the big stick. In fact, all those guys just mentioned that big sticks. Doyle is the short stick guy playing on this man down defense. Mm -hmm. Aaron pass by Evans, but it's recovered by Gutile. That's a tough, when the ball goes down, you're a man down. It's tough. You don't know whether to go after or not. Kukavan knocks that down, and uh, Syracuse going to have to clear. They got about five seconds to get it out of there. And they're going to get it up. Kukavan firing it up to Schmidt. That's called like kind of a cheap, and Schmidt takes off down the sideline. That knee brace, know <laughs> how much he's going to want to stop and start. He's going to make a long looping pass, and Lockwood loses it, and it's going to be back to Brown, but the penalty will expire, and Syracuse will be even up. Smith has not been back, uh, was not back in for Syracuse. Brown with it. Nine and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Syracuse back at full strength. Evans being guarded by Beardsley as they line up at the crease, then break out. Kugavan behind number 18 right there. Marty being hit by Kugavan. Marty tries to work in for the shot. And he took a little uh, trip through the crease there, it looked like. It's going to stay brown ball, so let's check the matchups. If we can on the replay. There it is right there. There's Marty and there's Kugavan. Watch him come back, roll inside, try to do that left-handed shot. And then he not on the mark. And we're back to live action offside against Syracuse. It will keep the ball in the cross of the brown jerseys. Pace has slowed considerably after that frantic first half. Part of that's because Brown has had the ball for almost the entire third quarter. Let's 
good. You can see what kind of skills you have to be able to keep. Look at the body. You have to keep square. Now there's a jump, slide, shot, goal. Jerry Swope gets on the scoreboard for Brown. Here's a classic example of what you see in lacrosse. Now watch. Here's the slide. They try to double team him. They slide over. Now he dumps the ball off. Now he's got to slide up. Kugavan's got to slide up and take the man. But he gets there too late. Not able to get on the stick. And Brown scores. It's, it's little tiny movements that you have to be able to see and read and react to if you're an offensive player and a defensive player. And they were able to get a goal there, make it 10-7. First goal of the day for Swope. Picked up nicely by Fietta to Ryder. Oh! Big time save for Stalford. They went right at his chest. They have not taken a lot of bounce shots on him. They must know him, and he has been able to. How many saves? Must have 17 now. I'll check. Indeed, he's up to 20. Hmm. It's been a while since I looked at the save sheet. Karen Ryan keeps us right up to date. Oh, nice check. Brainy had it knocked off his uh, stick by Fietta. Brainy is from Fayetteville Manlius. And they are doubling the ball every chance they get. Oh, Marty. tough. And Marty gets on the scoreboard. Oliver Marty, who was shut down in the first half by Pat Kugavan, scores his first goal of the day. Unsettled situation. And they were really trying to double the ball, double team the ball, and they drop it off to Marty. Now watch Kugavan. He's left-handed, this guy, and he leaps. And right there, he's got him. The goalie has nothing but hope for divine in intervention. And he's not able to get it. Thirteenth goal of the year for Oliver Marty, the senior from British Columbia. He is uh, from Canada, like the Gates, like Tom Marichek, and he shares the NCAA record for most goals in a playoff game with Gary Gate of Syracuse with nine. Marty did that last year in the NCAAs against Loyola. Here comes Lockwood for Syracuse. Shot never made it to the goal. It was off the off body of, of Harvey Smith. Right. Syracuse ball, that was a shot. That was a shot, and Gary Nelson, number 15, tried to protect Syracuse from getting it, but they were closest when it went out of bounds, and that will stay Syracuse ball. Sullivan will run it in for Syracuse. A little more than seven minutes left in the third quarter. Ryder. Swinging it around. Back Lockwood. Zone defense again. Now give a little more. Make Syracuse work a little harder. I think it takes a little time off the clock too, Dan. I mean, I think you have to work a, a little harder. You don't get those situations that there's a shot. Ryder took the shot. Archer is closest for Syracuse. People will tell you the best way to beat a zone defense is when you can sprint up the field on a fast break. But uh, this is a settled situation. Now they're, they're chasing the ball behind and zoning out in front. After the big second quarter, Syracuse has been quiet in the third. You see these guys all taking, as, as they whip the ball around, they keep sliding and moving with their sticks up, trying to put two guys on the ball. There's a save. Stalfert stopping Ryder's attempt. Now a good opportunity for oh. Syracuse. Sullivan's low shot gathered in by Stalfert. Beardsley poking the ball forward. Sullivan, who always seems to be around the ball, picks up the ground ball for Syracuse and gets it to Ryder. Ryder upfield. Finn with the pass. I beg your pardon, Lockwood with the pass. It rolls way upfield. Yeah, that'll be Brown ball. ball. Brown. Yeah, that'll be way down, too. They'll be in Syracuse half of the field, almost in the goal area. But you can see what Brown's trying to do when they get in that zone. Those three guys out in front, they just keep shifting as the ball moves and keep their sticks up, and it really forces you out. And if you get frustrated, it becomes a problem. But they've really taken some good shots, but uh, they've been able to really do a nice job of stopping. Stalford did a nice job. There's the quarter score, and you're going to see some more. Evans had an opening had he been able to catch the ball in the first attempt. Still belongs to Brown. Swope. Back outside to Gutile. 
Putao being watched by Doyle. Evans, uh, check that. Towers, Towers his yeah. bounce shot was wide of the mark. Evans was closest for Brown. Towers open on the crease, and he was disgusted with himself because he did not get a good, strong shot off. He is guarded by Smith. Big stick midi on Tower. Gutile against Doyle. Here's Swope. Swope, who has one of the two goals here in the third quarter for Brown. He runs behind, now charges toward the goal. He's being marked. And Swope forced outside back to Towers. Wittick, 45, is in playing. That's the man who was on him. There's a shot. Hard shot fired by Towers. Getting a little wide of the mark. And now they're going to play a little double team as the goalie comes out. Saran tried to take it away. Risky strategy, obviously, to have Saran run that far away. Towers. Save. Saran. Save. Saran with... Two big opportunities for Syracuse. Two big saves for Chris Saran. I don't know if the second one was technically a save, but he did get that first one. Oh, this is going to be tough. Towers with a pass. Ball comes loose. Marty retrieves it for Brown. Oh, well, Syracuse, there's a flag down now. Syracuse is going to be penalized. It's a delay. Delayed whistle. Let the offensive team... So they lose like that. So Beardsley's going to be on a hold, I think. So that's going to be another man up opportunity. This is number four. Actually better than uh, last week. He said on the year coming in, Syracuse had had 29 man down situations. They've only had four today. This is the fourth, and uh, Brown's been able to go one for three so far. This is the fourth. It'd be interesting to see if you had a time of possession stat like they do in football for this quarter. It seems right. like Brown has been putting the pressure on Saran for the entire quarter. Yet if you look at Syracuse, two, four, six, eight, nine shots, and uh, two, four, six, eight shots. So they about even in shots this quarter. Syracuse leads 10-8 with four minutes left in the third That's quarter. That's a heck of a clear. And that'll be a Syracuse attempt to get the ball. They could not. Now there's still some time left in the penalty, so that's why they made that long clearing pass. They figured by the time it gets down there, if I can get a guy in a white shirt to run underneath it and get it, so much the better. Otherwise, we don't have to deal with it. And if they lose it, now Brown's got to clear the whole way up the field. So they are still down a man. And now they're even. As Wittick runs on for Syracuse. Nice stick work by Doyle. Syracuse has it. Wittick running upfield. Oh. Tried to whip it to Archer. And the ball will go over to Brown. That's a tough situation to be in. Try to make that pass but on the run. But the catch, not there. Good pass. Ryder just couldn't handle the, the ball. Syracuse has been shut out in this quarter after scoring nine goals in the second. And as you said, the pace slowed down a bit. Well, Brown was racing back and forth in the second quarter and got outscored 9-2, so good adjustment made by Peter Lasagna to tell his team, when you get the ball, let's slow things down on offense, make sure we get good shots and take Syracuse out of its game. They run a little zone defense and... Uh, Matchup still pretty much the same. Syracuse man for man. Kugavan on towers. Right now. Thorpe slips. But Iserson couldn't capitalize. Teams at even strength. Inside of three minutes to go in the third quarter. Bounce shot. Rick Beardsley runs it down for Syracuse. And fires up to Reggie Thorpe. Thorpe. With the upfield pass, Syracuse get an opportunity. A 
against Stalford, who has not given up a goal in the quarter. Schusler was in, got it in. He's going to take off as they change on the fly, substitute on the fly. You'll see in the left-hand corner, people trotting in and out of the substitution area. Dom Finn takes the shot. A lot on it, but went wide. They can't get frustrated again. They have really had some trouble this quarter scoring. They've had a lot of shots. Nice catch by Finn going yeah. up the ladder to grab that from Ryder. Stolf. Excuse me, a Fiatta for Syracuse. Now behind to Ryder. Tried to get it to Finn. Finn didn't have it when he took the quick motion. And it's Brown. Harvey Smith running up field. Smith. A on that that shot. Syracuse that ball. Wide. Yeah, Saran right there. The big stick guy took a shot. But Saran out of the cage. Got there quickly and it starts the other way. Lacrosse, they call it the fastest game on two feet and you can see why. They don't take much time. See the time left in the third quarter. Syracuse's four goal lead at the half has been cut to two. Now they're back to man to man. Brown paying tough way out. Picking people up by the restraining line. And Colsey with it. Looking for a double every chance they get, trying to slide. Colsey. Not on the button. Goes wide. The race is on. Let's see. Stays in Syracuse's possession. Archer was deemed closest, although Stalford was sprinting to try to be. Yep. Lots of times you see guys dive. Now let's see what they do defensively. Back to his zone. Yep. So they're going to the zone, look. Syracuse having trouble finding cracks in that zone. You know, it's similar to the zone in basketball. Sometimes you have to take a shot out farther than you would like, and it's tough to work inside and get cutters inside. It's the same principle. And uh, there they got a ground ball. Nice job defensively by Brown, 38. Furman. But uh, let's see, it goes off of Syracuse, yep. Last touched by... Ryder. Matt Ryder. Yep. As we said, uh, Brown, well coached, playing very well. Down only by two with that much time left. Good defense by Syracuse. Doyle really hustling on the ball. Riddick comes up with it for Syracuse. Tried to get it to Chad Smith. He couldn't control. Archer did. Ryder almost had a clear opportunity. He regains it. Moves in yeah. and scores. Matt Ryder on his back after scoring his fourth goal for Syracuse. The Orangemen scoring for the first time in the quarter. And Syracuse is back up by three. Just as soon as you said he almost had a break. Watch what he does. He puts the acceleration on. Watch 36. Murphy. See the ball's on the ground. Watch, Murphy comes over, he just sprints now, turns on the speed, they try to slide too late. 33 tried to get out and, and help out. Brainy, watch, here it is again. Watch Murphy, 36. He can speed, and now Brainy can't get to him and he takes the shot. Landed on his back in the crease. Gives Syracuse a three goal lead and uh, Ryder having a good day, four goals and an assist. And the last one is pretty, as you'll see. Trainer Tim Neal coming out to check out Ryder after he was on his back for a few moments following that goal. He'll come off, Syracuse with a three goal lead as the third quarter winds down. Syracuse had gone nearly 15 minutes without scoring before that goal by Ryder. That's it for the third quarter. A quarter that was won by Brown 2-1, to one, but the late goal by Matt Ryder gives Syracuse a little momentum back as we get set to go to the final 15 minutes. Our score at the end of three quarters here at the Dome, Syracuse 11 and Brown 8.
Dan Horton, Dale Drypolcher back at the Dome. Delighted to have you watching with Syracuse leading by three, heading to the final quarter. The Orangemen have overcome a couple of long droughts, a 13-minute drought without a goal in the first half, and a drought of about 14 and a half minutes in the third quarter. Syracuse taking a lot of shots, and uh, we're not able to capitalize much, as you said, in that third quarter. You can see uh, saves 21 to 10, and Syracuse comes up with an important faceoff. It was 12 to 9. This will make it 13 to 9 in the faceoff department. Fazy one another for Syracuse. Ryder behind the cage. Barr, who's back in, to Sullivan. No to Lockwood. Charlie Lockwood. Pusha. Syracuse will be patient now, up by three with about 14 minutes and 20 seconds to go. Barr. Smith knocked it away from Pusha. Barr runs after him. Smith way upfield, overshoots his man. Lockwood tried to tip it ahead to himself. Brown has it. Now a long look upfield to Marty. Saran comes away from the cage to run it down for Syracuse. And he goes ahead to Barr. There's a vision thing. Oh, look at that pass. Oh. Barr to Ryder. A fantastic pass by John Barr. Matt Ryder gets the goal. Almost anyone could have scored the goal after that pass. Just a gorgeous look upfield by Barr. Well, you know, this is the thing that happens in practice. Starts with Saran. He makes the long pass, but watch Barr. He just takes one step, sees the man, takes the sidearm pass. This, mm. is from, this is from knowing where everybody is mm. on a break, and that's just a beautiful play. As you said, Ryder's going to get the goal, his fifth, but he just got a beautiful sidearm pass from John Barr back after a couple game suspension, and that uh, he looked real good there. Fazy picking up his game a little bit. Ball down, no possession yet on the face. It will stay... No possession, it'll be a reface. No, it goes off of somebody. So it'll stay brown ball. Ryder, number four, with the assist to number 30, John Barr. Matt Ryder, with his uh, fifth goal, has a new season high for goals in a game. His career high is seven. That was last year against CW Post. This has been as enjoyable a game as I can remember, Dan. Both teams playing excellent lacrosse. There's Evans and uh, Bam Bam takes it away at least momentarily. The ball's on the ground. And Evans was getting the better of that individual matchup early, but Beardsley has uh, certainly redeemed himself. Point blank shot by Towers, stopped by Saran. Saran high stepping away from Marty and bounces it between Brown players forward to Wittick. Archer had the man open, Bettinger, and it was just a little bit off the mark. You know, when you see that goalie come out like that and they all come looking for him, he's got a, he got a big bullseye there surrounding that too, but he did a nice job of doing AstroTurf pass. Ooh, yeah, a little frustrated on the, uh, on the pick, so Saran, a smart, smart goalie, gets out of the way, but you know, it's like the quarterback in football when he... He runs the ball, really picks everybody up, and you can hear the crowd. As soon as Saran takes a step out of there, they just come to their feet. We have had great goalie play today, both from Saran and Stalford. And Aaron just gets a pass off there. Stalford being poked by Archer. Brown successful on the clear. Towers. Nice look. And the save by Saran. The shot by Gutile didn't have a lot on it. Smith, the defensive midi, had a stick up on it, and they made him take something off it, ball down. Archer missed the opportunity to pick it up. Colsey, or I checked that, uh, Ryder comes up with it for Syracuse. That's Brainy, I think, 33 that, uh, nope, check that, it's not, 36. Murphy, who could not control it for Brown. A little more than 12 minutes remaining. Syracuse up by four, 12-8. Aaron's in 25, gets the ball. Troy Simmons going down on the bench a bit. 
for the unit that's on the field right now. Archer, though, quarterbacks things behind the cage. Freddie Amaya in. Had the ball. Syracuse taking their time. Alex Pateau, number 19, is also in for Syracuse. Aarons back to Amaya. Amaya around to Archer. Once again, that zone defense. Oh, lots of aluminum and fiberglass there on the shoulder. Aarons takes it, gives it up. This is Pateau, who had a good game early this year against Michigan State. Amaya, and it was knocked away before it got to the goal by one of the big sticks, John Murphy. Well, now here's a fast break opportunity as people run on and run off. Brown down by four. Nelson with the ball, 15. Left-handed, goes right. Fired the shot quite a bit wide to the right. Actually, Brown was closest. You're right. Pateau, 19, though, you know, it's one of the little things. Getting the stick up, making the shot go a little bit awry. It wasn't even close. Could have been closer, but you're right. Uh, good defense by Pateau and shot not on cage. Shot knocked down before it got to the goal. Recovered by Evans of Brown. They have a lot of time. People may wonder why aren't they hurrying. You know, that's a lot of time in lacrosse. If you can get the face-offs especially, you can get the ball right back. So you don't want to squander an offensive opportunity by rushing a shot. Bounce shot by Evans wide. And Thorpe runs after it to be closest to Syracuse. Evans quieted down a little bit this half. Yeah, he's really been quiet since he scored his third goal. Got to three very quickly. And uh, has not, a not bad done day. much since. Not a bad day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. But uh, his third goal made it 5-2. You can see the score now. Syracuse leading 12-8. And uh, Beardsley has been the man on Evans yeah. for most of the day. This is Beardsley for Syracuse. He's had a goal. Kind of shovels it back to Finn. Syracuse getting some of its first two teams back in. Should have fresh legs after the uh, respite given by the uh, reserves from further down on the bench. That's a pass. I don't think they'll be able to get that. Syracuse will have to clear. A little bit sloppy. See how Syracuse clears. <laughs> That's just Thorpe just uh, like a football move, which he played when he was in high school. Fietta with fresh legs running toward the cage. And it poked away, but it'll be run down by Syracuse. Donegan. Inside of nine minutes left, Syracuse with a four-goal advantage. Finn. See him cradling, almost directly in front of the cage, about 20 yards in front. Now a little crisscross pattern by Syracuse. Coles, he shoots. Donegan is closest for Syracuse. Ryder with it, 8.30 remaining. Well, you can hear that hacking and hewing down there with that, those sticks as they are contesting every ground ball. And this is going to be a free for all at the midfield line, but Syracuse gets it. Dom Finn up to Donegan. Casey with a spin move. Colsey. Colsey asking the attack men to come out a little bit. Colsey free for the shot and scores. Roy Colsey. Putting Syracuse on top by five for the first time in the game. Colsey out of Yorktown had mentioned, uh, made his hand in a gesture to have the attack come up and help him out. He takes a left-handed shot and uh, puts the game 
in jeopardy for Brown, up by five with 8.01 left, 13-8. There's Colsey on 93, no assists, 11 goals. Second on the team in goals with 11, Matt Ryder is the team leader with five today, he has yeah. 16. He's gonna pick up his lead today a little bit. Eight minutes to go, Syracuse with a five goal advantage. Face off, Brown, Towers, towering down the field. Hardy with one too many fakes after a great pass by Towers. He also was in the crease, so that'll cost him a possession. Syracuse will give the ball to Saran. And Thorpe, the last time he cleared it, he just uh, footballed it over. Ran it right over right now. They got to get it up 10 seconds, get it out. They got it. Well, they got 10 seconds to get into the uh, goal area. That didn't take long. Lockwood shot saved by Stalford. Regained by Lockwood. Dunnigan was really calling for it on the crease. He was wide open, but they, they couldn't get it to him. Shot and a goal for Syracuse. Matt Doyle with his first goal, and Syracuse leads by six. Numbers starting to tell here as Syracuse has got midfield strength extraordinaire and uh, I think Brown getting a little bit tired. Hard to stay with these guys into the fourth quarter like this and, and play at full speed when they've got fresh legs. But uh, it's a six goal lead now. Matt Doyle with his first goal of the day. Nine different Syracuse players have goals led by Ryder with five. Lockwood has two. And then the following seven players have one goal apiece. Bettinger, Archer, Finn, Beardsley, Donegan, Colsey, and now Doyle. Uh, there's a neat quote from uh, Lasagna in the, in the paper. He says, the th thing about Syracuse is they've got midfielders you've never heard of that are better than a lot of your guys. So here's the, uh, the shot. And Marty, one on one. And you see stick, stick up, and he hit the pipe. But his foot was on the uh, goal line there, the goal mouth, the crease. So that would have been disallowed at any rate. It gave Syracuse possession. Brown calling for the timeout after falling behind by six. Well, if you have any comments about our coverage of Syracuse sports, drop us a line. There's the address, Super Sports in care of Adelphia Cable, 500 South Salina Street in Syracuse. The zip 13202. If you have any thoughts on how much moose Dale was wearing <laughs> during the game today, feel free to drop us a line. <laughs> the usual pound, pound and a half. <laughs> Just empty the jar. That's right. Put that stuff on. Only costs about a bucket truckload. <laughs> Make your hair as hard as fiberglass. And I'm leaving myself wide open for a comeback <laughs> and by I'm bringing not up hair at all. A word. <laughs> Brown with it. 7:15 remaining. Syracuse has scored the last four goals after Brown pulled within two in the third quarter. Syracuse playing a little zone defense themselves as they are. Down a man. Kugavan again taking it away from Marty. Kugavan has definitely won that matchup today. Point blank shot taken by Syracuse. Morrissey had the opportunity but shot it wide. There wasn't a man up. Syracuse just went to his own defense. Kind of an unusual look for them, but they have shown it in the past. Good time to work on it, up by sure. six. Donegan looking for an open man. See him loading up the crease, the guys on the crease, and then looking for cutters from behind. Sullivan has the ball, number 21. Now within five yards of the goal, spins back over to Donegan. Donegan turning on the speed as he works behind. 
Sullivan shoots and a nice save made by Stalford. Here comes Brown with about five and a half minutes remaining. Loose ball picked up by Syracuse. Well, Back lost. to Brown. Pete Marty. Linklip in front defense, 28. Mm -hmm. Marty was able to elude the swiping attempt by Lockwood. Marty shot Save. a soft one that was saved by Saran. Now it's Lockwood running up for Syracuse, directing traffic. Charlie Lockwood with a shot, went wide, and Matt Doyle right there for Syracuse. So Syracuse gonna lose the ball, said that he stepped on the line. So Matt Doyle will get nothing in the way of uh, sympathy from the officials. They just turn it right around. Towers tried to get it upfield, and instead it was taken by Link Clip of Syracuse. Towers. Morrissey with the ball now for Syracuse. No, oh, he finds a seam in the carpet. Gets up, still has it. Bounce shot goes wide. The race on, and the race is won by the goaltender, Stalford. Stalford, by the way, up to, what, 24 saves. So he has had quite a day, and uh, he has played very, very well. I think in the first quarter, some of those shots were not particularly tough ones, but uh, since then, they've put a lot of good shots on. He's made a number of good saves. He's a good goalie. Replaced a good one as he's taking over for All-American Pat Flynn and the junior Stalford's done an excellent job this season. Came in only giving up about nine goals a game in Brown's first three games. Okay. Four twenty remaining. Towers, and he scores. Andy Towers. The six foot four senior making it 14 to nine. And there's Towers. That's Smith. He's on the big stick midfielder, and they can't get stick on stick. Boy, when you're that tall and that strong, it's hard to reach. Watch him try to reach and get the stick. He just can't do it. And uh, nice left handed shot by Towers. Makes it 14 9. So you can see that gives him the hat trick. Towers with his third goal, and he has 16 this season. That ends a drought of more than 17 minutes for Brown. And they get a face-off. Face-off's almost even 14-13 at this point. Some of the key ones in that uh, second quarter, however, I think three or four in a row went right to Syracuse. So that has been a statistic that is evened up for the game. Here comes Towers. Finn guarding him. Towers shoots and scores! Andy Towers with two goals in a very short span, and Brown is still alive, now within four. Towers just one-on-one -on -one with Dom Finn, and he likes that. Comes back, scored left-handed the last time, goes right-handed there and takes a low one-hopper up over Saran. Watch, him left, come back, goes right, and I think it went off of the stick of Saran. I think Saran got the stick on and couldn't control it, so he goes to four and one on the day. That's why you get those face-offs. Syracuse can't quite put it in the book yet. Up by four with 3.48 remaining. They haven't been able to get the ball yet. Fazy going after it. Oh, nice kick ahead by Murphy for Brown. Brown trying to pull within three. Been a long time since Brown was within three. The big stick shoots. Saran coming up with two big saves for Syracuse. Not that the second shot was so good, but it came upon him so quickly. Now Saran running up field. Timeout. Syracuse. Timeout. Incidentally, that was Furman, the defenseman there. I, I said Murphy, it was Furman. He's the one that took mm -hmm. the shot. And uh, then Saran <laughs> up with two saves. That's Furman. Comes from behind. Watch, he's gonna have to switch, tries to go underhand. I was gonna say he's gonna switch, but that stick's too big. Chest save, body save, and you see how he rides it up over the goal. Now he's looking for it. Where is it? Ball goes down again and is bounced toward the cage, and he's right there. Don't go on the field. 
319 left as Syracuse called that timeout. The Orangemen will have the ball with a four goal lead. It's ran up to 15 saves. He had a personal record last week against Towson. And another reminder that if you have any comments on our coverage of Syracuse sports, particularly lacrosse in the lacrosse season, send us a line to Super Sports, Adelphia Cable, 500 South Salina Street in Syracuse, the zip 13202. And our next game coming up Tuesday night, Syracuse will host Hobart at the Dome. Check your local listings for the time of the telecast near you. Well, another outstanding effort for Chris Saran. Catching a breath with 319 to go. John Barr with it. He shoots and scores. John Barr restoring Syracuse's lead to five, and that should just about do it. Not that it was real tight with Syracuse up by four, but that kind of shuts down any hopes Brown had of pulling off a miracle. It was a zone and Murphy, 36, slid out, but sidearm, right hand, right hand, watch the sidearm look right there, and uh, Barr, who makes his reappearance, has had a Excellent day today. He's three and one on the season. That's missing two games. Mm -hmm. What is he for today? Dan? One goal, one assist. One and one, and not that much playing time. That's right. And uh, his his scoring effort has come late in the game when Syracuse needed a couple to really put Brown down. The laser in. He's played exceptionally well. Dom Finn in, also has played very, very well. See the time and the score. Syracuse leading by five as we wind down in the fourth quarter. Finn with the spin moves. Back to Barr. Looks like Brown really doesn't have the legs to be too aggressive in trying to take the ball away. Tower is trying right there. He has played a heck of a game. He's played a lot of defense, and they get under two minutes. They're going to have to keep it in that box. There's a shot by Lockwood. Under two minutes, the officials will tell you you have to keep in. Eliminates a lot of stalling near the end of games, both offensively and defensively. That was a nice check by Towers. Ryder was the guy who went down for Syracuse. Smith runs up. Looked like he took one in the face. No call. Now the flag comes in. Smith takes the shot. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but he was running with a stick. It was like somebody getting shot by an arrow and keep right on running. They got him in the neck. Watch. Who's this, Finn? Yeah, well, no, that's just a slash. This is Finn. Oof. And watch what happens. He st stays right there. He's running like he's been shot, and he just shakes it off at 6'4", 200 pounds. And he has been a, a real force today for Brown, and Syracuse will be down as they sort this one out. Syracuse down two men. 30 seconds holding against Syracuse. Call up Don Finn. Violation on Finn. It'll cost him 30 and seconds. I thought... I thought there would be two penalties. So Ryder is down for a minute. So they are two men down. That was the that was the hit. That's how it started all with Towers. And this is a retaliatory slash. And that was a, that was a hold. Held his progress up for maybe a half a second. Always sir when you talk. Jim O'Hara. <laughs> a lot of sirs. And you're down two men, and that's the bottom line. John Desco, Kevin Donahue, Laddie Horrell, part of the Syracuse coaching staff. Syracuse wants a timeout. 
So they want Syracuse's a final timeout. Yeah, down two men. As Saran trots over to the bench area. He'll certainly have his work out, uh, cut out for him. <laughs> yeah. There will be two men down. Two for 30 seconds, and if Syracuse is somehow able to kill off that stretch, another 30 seconds, one man down. This was kind of interesting. This is, gives you an idea of what lacrosse is like. Body contact, running, stick checking, bang, holding, shaking it off, and taking a shot. Finally, the save. It's all right there. Saran kind of not sure at that one. But as a result of that, Syracuse will have two men in the box. Let's hear what Mr. Simmons has to say. So one of the things you're talking about is that, you know, you cannot go on the field this year at all. So Syracuse serves two penalties. They lost the ball in the dead ball situation. Syracuse gets the ball at the midfield. Yeah. Yeah. Official Lingenfelter gives us the Kurt Lingenfelter gives us the interpretation. Syracuse has the ball, but they're two, four, five, eight guys. Yep. Now Barr is just going to try to run with it and get it over to the goalie. They still got to get 10 seconds. They got to get it up. He'll try to cheap it up out of there in a second. All right, he got over. No, he didn't make it over the line. So that'll be failure to advance. You see, you got to get it out of your defensive goal area within 10, 10 seconds. I thought he was going to throw it to cheap it out, but they didn't get that opportunity. So now they will play two men down. Only uh, four big sticks in front of Saran with uh, six people trying to score. Yeah, always oh, knocked it down momentarily. Now that's a now they got only one man down. Smith, the big stick midfielder, he's got control of it. He's just going to sprint if he gets it in the box. There's a release. They're all even. And Syracuse scores to make it 16 to 10. Nice play by Chad Smith. He did two things. He got the penalty released, and he didn't take a, a shot. Even though with that big stick, you don't get much of an opportunity. Watch what he does. First of all, he gets control of the ball. Now he stops. Now he sees that nobody's with him. He sprints. When he gets in the yellow line, watch when he gets his foot in there. Right there. Now that releases the penalty. Now, normally, you'd figure a guy like this would take a shot. He dishes it off, gives it up. He's going to get an assist. Matt Doyle with a goal for Syracuse, his second. Doyle trailing, got the pass. So Doyle in the right place for the good pass. Quick opportunity oh. and a goal scored by Towers, giving him five. That faceoff just fired down the side, or right down the middle by Peters and then uh, all by himself. Towers where he has found himself alone on the crease a couple of times. Uh, right after the face, a sprint. And there you see right there, by himself on the crease. So at 16-11, 58 seconds, and Towers five and one. Good day for the big six foot four guy. He's now playing on the attack. Had been in midfield different times. Less than a minute remaining in the game. Syracuse up by five. Marty's shot knocked away by Reggie Thorpe. Marty again. Thorpe again. Same matchup. 11 on 10. Is, this, is that Evans? That is Evans. Yep. He scored three goals. 20 seconds left. Saran with a save. Marty tries to poke it forward. Saran scoops it off the turf with 12 seconds to go. Syracuse about to win its third game of the season. And will be an impressive win against the fifth-ranked team in the country. Colsey 
He'll take a last shot. It's saved, but it doesn't matter. Syracuse comes away with a win over Brown in a hard-fought game here at the Carrier Dome. Little handshaking as uh, Chris Saran takes the time for a little speculation. And Syracuse has a victory. The final score, the Orangemen 16 and the Bears 11. Great balance today for Syracuse. Ten different players scoring goals as the Orangemen beat Brown 16-11. Just looking quickly at the stats, one that crept up at the end of the game. Syracuse 64 shots to 39 for Brown. So Syracuse uh, getting a lot more offense and really, I think, played very, very well after that uh, first quarter. So Syracuse improves to 3-2 and two with a victory. Brown falls to 3-1 and one with a defeat. Syracuse now 6-0 and oh all time against Brown. Syracuse's next game, Tuesday night against Hobart. Again, check your local listings for the time of the telecast nearest you. A reminder that Syracuse Sports is a production of Super Sports and Adelphia Cable Communications. For Dale Drypolcher, this is Dan Hort saying thanks for watching and good night from the Carrier Dome.